Ugh. Don't want to study anymore. Ugh. Have you said that before? I'm sure you have. I have too. As somebody who was starting med school, studying 8 to 10 hours, I was sick of it and day in and day out. You know, I couldn't do it any longer. And you're probably in the same boat where you don't want to study, but you kind of have to, but you don't want to, but you kind of have to. So how do you overcome this feeling of being tired and not wanting to study? What if I gave you six simple steps you could do to not only feel more motivated and more energized when you're studying, but be more productive than not majority of the days? If those six steps sound interesting, then stay tuned. I'm gonna give you them right after this intro. Alright guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. This channel is all about helping medical students and pre-meds thrive on their medical journey instead of just surviving. So if you want to learn how to do that through weekly videos, make sure you first of all hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. Alright guys, so in this video we are going to be talking about what to do when you're tired of studying, how to continue to study when we're tired, and how to basically get out of this kind of roller coaster cycle and slump. Um, so I'm gonna give you six easy to follow steps that are gonna help you throughout the process. So let's get to step number one, which is understanding what is your fluff to impact ratio. Now think about everything you do when you're studying. In fact, I would encourage you to keep a running tally from Monday to the end of the weekend on everything you do hourly. This includes how many hours you spend reading your syllabus, going to lecture, reviewing, just keep track of every single thing you do that you would regard studying. And then at the end of the week, um, go ahead and give each task a score from one to five. Five being this was super helpful, one being this was a complete waste of my time. And what you wanna do is you wanna identify anything that's three and below, all those one, twos, and threes, and these are going to be your fluff task. These are going to be studies, strategies that you're doing, but you acknowledge aren't really that helpful to your final result. But you're doing them either because you think you have to, everyone else is, or it's kind of like an initial step before you can get to the review process. So identify where your fluff step is, and then also identify your fours and fives. What are you doing that is leading to results? And now we're gonna make a quick shift, which is the second part of step one, and that is to spend 80% of your time, at least, doing things that are fours and fives, things that are high impact and limit your fluff tasks to about 20%. You may be somebody, for example, who reads the syllabus for understanding the background info and that's somewhat helpful, so you feel like that's a step you have to do, but something like going to lecture doesn't really work for you. In fact, it may be just a waste of an hour because you don't really absorb that much info and you're sitting there and you can't spend that time doing anything effective. So what you wanna do, guys, is for week number two, is you wanna spend a majority of your time doing your fours and fives, whatever you identify it, and spend less, 20% of the time, doing things that are threes and belows. And avoid the ones and twos if you can. And now, step two is cut your studying by 25%. Sounds dramatic. So if you're spending eight hours, you want to now get to six. And some of you will be like, well, Lux, how do I even do that? You know, I'm tired of studying. You're telling me to study less, but I need to do better. Like, what am I supposed to do? None of that makes sense. And I get it. But if you are focused on identifying your high impact tasks, and now you're spending 80% of your time doing them, you're likely going to be getting to the same performance level in terms of understanding the material much faster. If, for example, you're a student who loves going to lecture, and that's how you get a majority of your info. But reading the syllabus and doing things like outlines don't really help you, and you start to cut those out of your study regimen, then you continue to go to lecture like you've been doing, but you spend less time doing those less effective methods. Now, you probably can easily go from that eight to six hours really quickly. And in fact, most of my students I teach this technique to are able to make a drop in their study time of anywhere from 30 to even 50%. So make the small goal of 25%. If you, if you can identify your high impact task, then cutting it to 25% shouldn't be very hard. So if you're at eight hours currently, get to six, if you're at 10, that would be about 7.5, you get the gist. Now step number three is learning how to get into a flow state. Now most of you guys know what the flow is. That's like when you're feeling in the zone and you're getting so much work done, it feels like you've only been studying for like 30 minutes, but it's actually been hours. Doesn't happen quite often with studying, but many of you guys know what I mean. You're in the zone, things are getting done, you feel productive. If you're doing high impact tasks, and now you're spending less time doing it, you're going to be able to get into the flow zone 
more often. And some techniques that I love using are things like the Pomodoro technique, which many of you guys have heard about, which is spending 25 minutes of intense working with no distractions. There's some helpful timers, which I'll link in the description, to help you stay focused, and then five minutes of rest. And then you go back to 25 minutes, then five minutes of rest. And after a couple of cycles, your rest is like 15 minutes. But it's a good cycle of work that's not too long, and rest that's not too long as well um, to keep you in a sense of productivity. I used it this morning, for example, to finish a book that I'm writing. I was able to write 5,000 words uh, before 8 a.m. So you can get a lot of work done when you're in a flow state. And now after identifying your high impact tasks and cutting down your hours, you can now use techniques like the Pomodoro technique to make sure those high impact tasks work even better. Now step number four, guys, is to work in a flow environment. Now this is a little bit different than learning how to get into a flow state. It's basically saying find your environment, which is physical location, as well as everything around you that helps you get into the zone easier. Because if you're tired of studying, the last thing you want is the things around you to distract you from starting. Because sometimes that's the biggest hurdle we have to go through. So for example, you may study better at your local library, you may study better at the coffee shop than you do at home. I know when I'm at home, I see the kitchen and the refrigerator right there, and I have so many distractions and hunger cravings while I'm studying. So I try not to study uh, majority of the time at home, but you may be different. So that is part of your environment. Other things are whether you listen to music, where's your phone, you know, put it in your room, put it on silence, listening with headphones. Just creating the perfect environment that's saying, okay, I'm going to spend the next 25 minutes in a Pomodoro technique in flow, but I need everything around me to be conducive to getting in the zone quicker. So avoid the distractions and be in a flow environment. Now two more steps to go. Step number five is to have a cutoff time. One of the biggest reasons that we are tired of studying is because there's no finish line to it, right? You study today, you go to bed, you repeat tomorrow, and you continue the process over until you're burnt out, and you're to the point where you're watching this video on how to study less, you know, like I get it. Uh, but if you have a cutoff time of an hour every single day where you're like, well, regardless of what's going on, this is the time I'm going to call it uh, a day, you're going to be able to say, okay, I can study and I can see the end in sight. So I would recommend uh, cutoff times such as 8.30, 9 o'clock, depending on how late or of a night owl you are, because then you can still have a couple of hours to do you, you know, whether that's reading, watching TV, spending time with a significant other, friends, you know, you get the gist. But having a cutoff time is huge in just terms of motivation to continue work now, because you know that you're not going to continue to be working all the way to bedtime. And finally, step number six is have some kind of reward at the end. You know, studying day in and day out without any type of tangible result, especially when tests can be like four weeks down the line, it's really hard to stay motivated and I totally get that. So have some type of small motivation. It may be simple as giving yourself some dessert. You know, you have some ice cream in your fridge saying after I finish, you know, uh, these two hours of high impact flashcards, then I'm going to reward myself with some haagen which sounds amazing, by the way. Uh, it may just be your favorite TV show, dinner with your spouse. You pick the reward. It can be big, small, you know, vary every single day. It may be a workout if you're a crazy individual. But regardless of what it is, have something at the end of sight. But now you have a cutoff time that you can look forward to, but you also have something waiting for you that's going to be oh so good and it's going to make the studying a little bit easier. So guys, those are the six steps, and I want to quickly just kind of go over them um, just so we can all be on the same page. So first is to identify your fluff to impact ratio and spend 80% of your time doing those four and five tasks, you know, the tasks that are really getting the results majority of the time. Step number two, cut your studying time by 25%. If you're spending the majority of time with high impact tasks, you won't have to spend as much time as you've been doing currently. Three and four are getting in flow states using things like the Pomodoro and getting in a flow environment, making sure everything around you is set and conducive for you to study well. And then five and six are to have cutoff time and have something to look forward to after you're done studying. So don't be one of those students that just studies and goes to bed. That's not really something to look forward to. Have something personal, a personal hobby or something that just excites you to finish and kind of enjoy yourself afterwards. So guys, those were my six tips on how to study when you're tired, what to do when you're tired of studying, and hopefully they're helpful. Now really quickly, if you want to learn how to study better and how some of my students are just completely transforming their academic life in just three short weeks because they are now learning what they're doing correctly 
and what they're doing wrong and transforming it in three weeks to create a study system just for them, then check out my Level Up Your Studying course where I teach you in just three short weeks and three modules to help you identify what's working, what's not, and how to make it perfect. And you can see some of the results in some of my students. Again, I'll link that down in the description down below. And as an extra bonus, you know, if you stuck around to the very end of this video, first of all, thank you. I'll be doing a quick giveaway, which is if you comment down below, hashtag let's level up. Now I'll be selecting one lucky subscriber, so you have to like this video, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll be picking one of y'all to win the video course for absolutely free. So it's going to be super cool as a thank you for making it to the end of this video, and also for commenting, liking, and obviously being part of the community and subscribing. So really quickly again, make sure you subscribe, comment down below, and like this video. But that's going to be it for this, guys. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below as well uh, with whatever you need help with, and I'll be happy to make a video about it in the future. Um, but like I always do, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'll stop babbling. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, my friends.